As some of you fine folk might know, I study classical archaeology at the prestigious institution of Concordia University. And as anyone with a classical degree knows, half of your degree, unofficially, is being the best dinner conversation a casual person can have. So, often, myself and people like me get asked casual questions about different facts of the ancient world. So I'll get asked, hey, I heard this and this. Is that true? And I'm human. I'm like anyone else. I like to show off sometimes, so I'm always more than happy to answer these kinds of questions. And I did say in my previous video that ancient Egypt is my favorite ancient civilization, but it is also the source of the hardest questions people can throw at me. Namely, questions surrounding their religion and belief system. And there is another point. My education, my CGEP, my university, and all of that, I have not been treated to knowledge of Egypt with as much weight as has been provided to civilizations such as Greece and Rome. But I don't exactly know nothing. Every once in a while, I'll be asked something like, is it true that the Egyptian god of such and such is example Hotep? By all measures, it should be an easy question to answer. It's just one god, one attribute, simple. And if it were a Greek god with its equivalent attribute, it would be a simple answer. Now, the thing is about Greece is they have a pantheon where the gods and their attributes are relatively consistent over a long period of time. Ancient Greece has a body of literature that backs up the consistency that each individual piece of literature more or less agrees with the others on who does what. For the Egyptians, there's the basic Old Kingdom pantheon that myself and many others are very familiar with. You know, it's things like Ra is the supreme god, Horus is the god of kingship and rules over the earth, and Osiris is god of the dead and rules over the underworld. Like I said, basic, simple enough. But the thing you have to keep in mind about Egyptian culture is just how long that culture was around. For you and me, Julius Caesar is an ancient figure. He lived somewhat over 2,000 years ago. And in turn, in his time, the Egyptian civilization had already been around for 3,000 years. And so, therein lies the problem. A culture that has existed for 3,000 years will inevitably be changed from what it was originally. But it should be noted that the Egyptians were unparalleled traditionalists. For the Egyptians to change anything, they either have to be invaded or they have to go through a small apocalypse. Which, if you remember my video on Ma'at, you'll know exactly why. The objective truth of the matter is, culture is an organic machine comprised of individuals. No culture could go unchanged for even 1,000 years. The other problem is that Egyptians didn't really care if there were contradictions in their religion and belief system. In fact, they seemed to rather like having contradictions. It gave their gods and divinity as a whole a sort of esoteric mist around the whole affair. That even if you were learning more and more about the gods every single day, there would always be more mysteries after every one that you solved. Growing up in Montreal, I am more familiar with Christianity, a religion where the precise nature of their one god and how to worship him is the site of enormous contention since the religion began. The Egyptian religion would have had some basic concepts and basic ritual formats, but ultimately the specifics about the whole religion were quite likely very flexible. Different rulers over the millennia might decide to emphasize different gods, one over another. Maybe emphasize one of that god's attributes over his other attributes. Or maybe he'll just decide to mix maybe three gods together into one god, and that's the new god now. And if some of the changes disagree with other aspects of the religion, that's fine for them. Maybe you, a simple farmer, are confused by the contradictions of your own religion. Maybe you're confused about how Amun exists now, 
but he did not exist before. Or maybe you're confused by how Amun is now one with Ra, we'll say. So you ask a priest, a specialist of some sort, and they might tell you, well, that was true before, and this is true now. Or they might say that both things are true at the same time. They might tell you, just embrace the contradictions. Truth is ultimately of the divine. In fact, Egyptians almost seem to actively dislike the solidification of their religion. New gods? Fine and dandy. Mixing gods? That's okay too. Akhenaten made it so that his new god Aten was not only now the most important god, but that all the other gods could no longer be worshipped, that they were no longer worthy of worship. Now, they didn't have a revolt in his lifetime, but very soon after his death, everything he did was undone. All this to say is that their religion is the definition of nebulous. So sometimes someone asks me about a god I've never heard of before and tells me their attributes and well the attributes kind of sound like this but not quite that and I'm just there without a clue. And I just have to tell them that, I'm sorry, I have no clue, I have never heard of this god. Which I must say is quite detrimental to me trying to show off. 